as oscar wilde put it to live is the rarest thing in the world most people just exist that is all the challenges to emotional health arise most visibly early in our lives as the pressure to fit and compare with others builds it becomes increasingly normal not to be emotionally healthy hello everyone i am tanni faculty at gips and on today's conversation series we will explore how we can become emotionally healthier i am elated to introduce to you dr sanjeev p sahani principal director at jindal institute of behavioral sciences at op jindal global university he has over 32 years of uh, extensive and rich experience in industry academia and governmental sector and has several awards to his credits welcome dr sahani it is a pleasure to have you with us today thank you so dr sahani everyone is confronted by our own emotions in addition of those of others the way we manage these emotions can help us relate with others and also how people perceive us we often talk about having that emotional intelligence so what is that emotional intelligence and what is its significance in our lives oh uh, thank you very much first of all i must tell you that this is the one of the uh you know most uh likable and an important topic which uh, for months i wanted to discuss on this you know mostly people misunderstand emotional intelligence with intelligence intelligence is an obsolete word now it has been replaced by competence or by certain sect of intelligence like emotional intelligence social intelligence and so on out of this the most important is emotional intelligence as you said what is it about emotional intelligence first of all that can i understand my own emotions and can i understand other people emotions this is the main thing which you know in other words it's well said that self awareness am i aware about my thoughts deeds actions feelings and so on then talking about other people's that's the social awareness how well i'm aware when i'm talking to people on this resilience empathy which are part of emotional intelligence and the social skill which is very important to be a successful for this person for any person is uh social skills and in that emotional intelligence definitely develops social skills and which is a main characteristics to be a successful so if you combine all these things uh emotional intelligence considered to be a tool for success that was pretty insightful dr sahani but how important is emotional intelligence in our lives and how does it help us to navigate through various situations in our lives you know let me tell you one thing there is a very important saying that you may get a job because you are intelligent but your success and failure is totally dependent on emotional intelligence i can't control on my aggression i shout at people i am not a team player i am not ready to listen to anyone now those people cannot be or will not be accepted in any kind of a work setting so it is important that many things you don't like uh, working with your colleagues whether senior or junior colleague but you don't show that if you will start projecting your feelings and you don't have any kind of a control on that that is not desirable so i would suggest that it is important that right from the beginning in the schools itself it is important that we provide a training on emotional intelligence now you can ask me how we can do about it i must tell you that there are certain exercises we we create a situation in the classroom for younger children where we try to see how they are going to react uh, we ask children to uh, play a character of a story and try uh, to show emotions in that and then we try to record that and many times it happens that many children says 
I can't believe it that I can behave like this because many of us we are not aware about our emotional intelligence when the situation comes situation is not there we all talk you know things like emotional intelligence but how I will come to know it's not that you give a questionnaire that how you perform and how you behave but it's more important under a given a circumstances given a situation how you perform then you can come to know about your own emotional intelligence and how well you can control your emotions for other people as well. So we can establish that in today's highly competitive world, uh, people who have high emotional intelligence, they can set themselves apart and also create real opportunities for themselves. And with the benefit of emotional intelligence, high levels of it, we can uh, accrue a lot of benefits from it. So there, in the public domain, there's a saying that if somebody is academically brilliant, but they're not successful in their personal relationships. So what are some of the things that emotional intelligence can help us to attain in our lives? Very good question. In fact, partly I've answered it as well. Um, you know, I can be an excellent worker. I can be an excellent policy maker. I can be an excellent executor. I can be an excellent businessman or a management person. But how well I deal with other people is more important than my own intelligence. Now, when we talk about intelligence, you know, one is skill, another is a knowledge, another is qualification, then your experience and other things. That matters only roughly 10% in life. It's like an iceberg, you, you must have seen that, uh, you know. But the 90% in any individual is invisible. What are those invisible things? Is like your values, your morals, your opinions, your judgments, your beliefs. All these things drives you for success. If you want to be a great entrepreneur, if you want to be a great professional, if you, you, you name any, profession you are invisible which is all these things which I just mentioned called attitude and attitude is basically your emotional intelligence in other words there are times in our lives that certain events happen on a day that was uh, relatively uneventful for example maybe I was going in a car but all of a sudden in the car radio I listened to a sad or sentimental song and it could change my emotions at that moment when such events happen, we react in different uh, ways depending on our emotions. What are emotional triggers? First of all, I must tell you that emotional intelligence, the major component of developing an emotional intelligence happens in early childhood. Maybe the first 10 years, I would say. How you are being raised and then the home atmosphere and early experience which you get in the school. Any kind of a traumatic experiences in early childhood or extremely happy experiences in early childhood will have a greater effect on your emotional intelligence. Now assume that there are certain uh, broken homes or there is a domestic uh, abuse or a violence at home. Those children, what we have seen, when they grow, they lack in emotional intelligence. It will not happen with everyone, but the probability is very high. Now, second thing which I want to say that you keep learning emotional intelligence. I'm not saying that it finishes after 10 years, but majority is from uh, zero to 10. And then you keep on learning to certain extent. But my question is, it's very rare and it is difficult to acquire an emotional intelligence at a later age because once the personality develops, it requires a rigorous training to change. So now that we have established what are emotional triggers and what could lead to it, how do we respond to those circumstances? What are the sources that can lead to emotional triggers? Many times, assume that I give you certain situations you are a businessman and there is a strike in your company. How you are going to deal with it? If you are becoming more egoistic, 
that I'm not going to listen to these people, you are creating problems for yourself. You need to be smart enough. You need to know when you need to surrender. You need to uh, ready for talks. There is nothing harm apologizing because saving a situation is a emotional intelligence. Similarly, you know, most of us, when we work in a professional setting, we need to take work, we need to work ourselves, and we need to uh, give it uh, our work to the seniors as well. In that case, is, if there is a right congenial atmosphere at workplace, and if we enjoy a good repo with other people also, there will be less stress or anxiety at workplace. I must tell you that today, the key for success is only one word, how well you can adapt yourself, which another means is emotional intelligence. So for example, if certain people have family stressors, uh, maybe they come from broken homes or they have parental issues and there are changes in situations like they have to move to a new job, new location. So in those situations, how do we devise a strategy so that we can deal or be better in our emotional intelligence? In fact, Tani, I must say that it's a very, very important question and we are indulging in one of the very big research on this is on internal displacement people, IDPs. Now many people when they are displaced, uh, maybe because of floods or maybe because of riots or, or any other things, uh, you know, those people when they move out, how well the society, wherever they go, they accept them. Two, whether they are ready to be accepted. The cultural differences are there. There's the customs differences. There's so many things. Here, if I have been trained, when I have been raised well, I will try to adapt the new culture well. Yes, there is a role of the other side also. How well the uh, people around me are going to accept it. Let's say if I move to uh, some another province or a state, now how well they treat me and how well I'm ready to adjust with them from both sides, whatever is going to happen is an emotional intelligence. Even science uh, has proven that emotion is also strongly linked to memory. The information that passes to our brain usually comes to our senses. But sometimes in situations which are emotional or overwhelmingly stressful, our responses, our instincts, uh, they are limited to only to fight, fight and flight response. So how do we uh, relate? How do we balance our emotional and rational part of our brain? Uh, it's very easy, uh, you know, when you're talking like this, it's very easy to say all these kind of things. But I must tell you one thing. Any kind of, a, as I said, traumatic experience or extremely uh, pleasurable experiences that goes and stays in my subconscious mind and that stays there forever. It's not that you have an eraser and it can go away. And whenever that situation comes, again it triggers. So what I'm trying to tell and I want to give a message, especially to parents and the early childhood, uh, especially in the schools and maybe till adolescent level. This is the time when we think, we talk about and we provide a training on emotional intelligence so that we can adapt any new environment whichever comes on our way. So now I think we have clearly established that if we master our emotions, we will master our life. But even in today's generation, we have observed that uh, people, they try to dismiss their emotions. So what should we do? Do we acknowledge them? And how do we devise a strategy to deal with those emotions, especially in younger generations? You know, you, there cannot be a universal answer to it because uh, you may not show emotions maybe at that particular time but you need someone when you come back home if any untoward incident has happened in an office where you are highly disturbed you need not to show your aggression over there but when you come back home there is nothing harm talking to your family or your friends about it because you can't keep things in you the more you will keep things in you it may blast someday so uh, it is important 
that we must discuss these things with important people in our life. But for example, if in a family situation, in a family setting, uh, parents are not emotionally regulative themselves. So in those situations, what can children do for themselves? Nothing. I'll be, I'll be honest. If uh, anyone's parents are highly aggressive and they are fighting at home and either the child will be highly submissive or the child will also learn highly aggressive qualities of parents. And we, there are a lot many researches which talks about they will not be able to control their emotions. So it is very important time and again, I'm saying the same thing. What is important is that the raising children and early childhood till adolescent, if they have a very conducive environment, they will be healthy, they will be high on intelligence, and we can predict their success as well. Uh, there is a very important experiment which you must be aware of is a marshmallow experiment where they said that delayed uh, gratification and instant gratification uh, there is a research which very clearly uh, correlates with the people with the delayed gratification they achieve much higher uh, success than the instant uh, gratification children so what is that it's an emotional intelligence so what i would suggest that we need to develop uh, we need to provide training we need to raise children. If parents have a right kind of an emotional intelligence, their children will also be high, high on emotional intelligence. So now that we know that parents also have a significant role to play in regulating emotions of themselves and their children, how about in school settings? For example, in Delhi, we have observed the happiness curriculum that has begun in schools. So what about bringing emotional intelligence into our school system? I have two observations on that. The first observation is that, first of all, it is a very good step by the government to start these happiness classes. The second thing which I want to tell that through theory, you cannot teach happiness. You have to create an environment. You need to create a situation. Another thing is, fine, thank you very much. You are doing it in schools. What is going to happen when I go back at home, when my father is coming in a drunken state and hitting my mother every day, then my happiness is not going to be there. So my question is that in the parent-teacher meeting, it is important, the Delhi government should also do that. It is important that they should be made aware that how important is that what kind of atmosphere at home they need to create so that children can develop high emotional intelligence. Thank you, Dr. Sahani. It was a very insightful conversation today. I think with our conversation today, we have established how to master emotional intelligence and all the things that we need to know. So today in our conversation, we could infer that with the pace at which the world is becoming a global village, it is incredibly important how to establish emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence teaches and trains us to better relate with other people. In our conversation today with Dr. Sahani, we try to edge closer to emotional health. Thank you for joining us today. Stay tuned for more such interesting uh, topics in an exclusive series accentuating on behavioral sciences and related topics. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to Jib's Infotainment.